In today's gospel reading, we have an interesting fellow, a Roman centurion. Now, a centurion had a hundred soldiers under his command. He was very used to giving orders and even receiving orders from his higher-up commanding officers. If he gave an order, it was carried out, and if he was given an order, he carried it out. Clearly, the centurion understood that Christ was one of authority, and he knew, he knew that Christ was, in fact, healing people. So it made perfect sense to him that if Christ gave the order for his servant to be healed, well, then the servant would be healed. It was simple log a simple logical matter. The centurion's servant was sick. Christ could heal by commanding it, and so Christ could, com could command that the servant be made well. It was very simple logic. We also follow simple, a similar logic when we go to the doctor if something ails us. The doctor writes us a prescription. We take to the pharmacy and have it filled out. We don't question it. We just do it. The pharmacist fills out the prescription. We receive the medicine and we take it home where we take the medicine each day until, so on, until we're made well. It's simple logic. Now Christ is called, and rightfully so, the physician of our souls and bodies. Like the centurion gave commands and doctors give prescriptions, Christ gives us a prescription to follow, to receive Holy Communion, his body and blood. Christ is both the doctor and the medicine, and the church is the hospital where we are healed. The natural state of humankind is to walk with and for the heart to encounter God, just as Adam and Eve did in the garden. Since we do not see God and said, desire things that are not good for us, we need healing. We are often told to do good deeds and to be good people, but yet we struggle to do good deeds. To be honest, it is to be spiritually healthy. To be good is to be spiritually healthy. In order to become spiritually healthy, we must take the true medicine. This true medicine is Christ. If we are what we eat, then we become Christ, become like Christ by eating Christ. It is simple logic. The Greek word for salvation means to be made whole. In order to be made whole or to be saved, it means to be united to Christ. The body needs food to live, but what sort of food feeds the soul? We need to become healthy, and this means going to church to receive Holy Communion. But in order to receive Holy Communion, we must be prepared. We must be prepared. We're never truly worthy to receive Christ, but we need to receive a spiritual prescription in order to receive Holy Communion prepared. We receive this prescription in the Sacrament of Holy Confession. During Holy Confession, it's not just about confessing our sins. This is where we start. We confess our sins so that our spiritual condition can be properly diagnosed. During the Sacrament of Confession, we think that it's priest, the priest who speaks, but Oftentimes, it is God who speaks, and the priest is just a witness as the prayers of the sacrament of confession state, and he will testify on our behalf on Judgment Day that we did confess. But it is the priest who often witness and repeats what he hears from Christ. A story was told to me once that a certain lady went for confession, and the priest was about to say something, but the lady said, Father, were you about to say this? And the priest was flabbergasted and said, How does she know exactly what he was going to say. And she responded that the dove on his shoulder said it first, and that she heard it too. Now in confession, we're given the prescriptions on how to live a Christian life, how to receive Holy Communion, how to fast, how to pray, how to give alms, and so on, all according to our spiritual condition. Confession is not a courtroom, but a spiritual medical clinic where Christ heals us and prepares us to be healed and perfected. All the sacraments heal. We need this healing. The more we participate in the sacraments, the more we are healed. This is not a hypothetical idea, but something that can be experienced. experienced. Orthodoxy is experiential. When a doctor gives us a prescription and we have it filled, we take that medicine and we start to be healed. And we know that it's working because we start to get better. Now it is the same with Orthodox Christianity. It works if we participate in the sacraments. It is not a matter to ponder. Does it work? Does God really exist? Should I go to church today? Orthodoxy is something experienced, and we know that it heals us when we experience it. We have the best medicine here, and we need to take advantage of it. Holy Communion is the medicine of immortality, as St. Ignatius of Antioch states. None of us want to die. We feel in our bones, as the saying goes, that we shouldn't die. The cure is right here. The proof is in the pudding, as the expression goes. You know it works if you try it. In our Holy Orthodox Church, we have incorrupt relics. For example, St. John, 
St. John Maximovich in San Francisco. In normal times, you can go there and see his body. It is as if he's still alive. Death is unnatural, and Christ is the cure who trampled down death by his own death on the cross. The centurion in today's gospel didn't question whether Christ could heal because he knew that Christ does heal. Now, if we receive Holy Communion, we'll know it to be a fact that Christ does heal. A theologian of the past century in Greece, I'm told, would say, Holy Communion makes saints. If we receive Holy Communion prepared, then we'll become saints. A saint is not some sort of magical being, but a spiritually healthy person. If we receive Holy Communion as often as possible, then we become healthy, which is to say, we become saints. As one of the prayers for Holy Communion says, come taste and see. Through the prayers of the Holy Fathers, Lord Jesus Christ, our God, have mercy and save us. Amen.